In our previous tutorial, we looked at how to match two purely resistive impedances, a source with a 50 ohm internal resistance and a load of 250 ohms. So in that case, we had a load resistance which was much greater than our source resistance. And uh, the way we carried out the match was to find a path that would allow us to move on the Smith chart from the point that uh, the, we were starting from, which was the impedance seen by the port, uh, to the uh, desired target point, which was the impedance we wanted the port to see. And uh, what we did, as you may recall, was to move down a constant conductance circle by adding a capacitor in shunt, and then to move up a constant resistance circle by adding a series inductor to then reach the desired impedance of uh, 50 ohm. First of all, I'd like to point out that there is more than one way to go from uh, one point of the Smith chart to another point, and hence you can carry out your match uh, by using different techniques, different number of elements, and different types of elements. For example, in this case, instead of going down a constant conductance circle for a start, we could have uh, moved up a constant conductance circle instead, which would have meant adding an inductor in shunt. And then once we reached the constant resistance circle, we could have added a series capacitor to move down to the center of the chart, which was our desired point. In this tutorial, we will be looking at a similar case, in that both our source and load impedances would be purely resistive. But we will be looking at the case in which the uh, source resistance is greater than the load resistance. So let's start with the usual uh, procedure. We'll open project options and select the frequency we desire. Then we'll go to global units and change them to units that we find advantageous. For the conductance, we'll pick mini Siemens. For the inductance, nano Harris. And for the capacitance, picofarads. We can then open a new schematic by right clicking on circuit schematic, selecting new schematic, and typing in a name. We'll call it two element match. Now we need to add a measurement port first. We can do that by pressing Ctrl P, placing the port on the schematic, and the uh, impedance of the port we will keep to 50 ohms. We then need to uh, put a load resistor on our schematic. We can do that by pressing Ctrl L, and then typing in RES, and then placing the resistor on the schematic like so. We can then add a ground reference by pressing Ctrl G, and placing the ground reference like so. And then we'll connect the two together. We'll choose a value for a load resistance of 20 ohms. We can then right-click on graph, choose new graph, select Smith chart as a type, and we'll call it two element match also. We now need to add a measurement to our chart. We'll right-click on the chart, go on to add a new measurement, and then select S11, and as a data source, we'll obviously select our schematic. Click on apply, and then OK. Then simulate. You can see that now we are at a different point in the chart, uh, other than the center, and we can just press Ctrl M, and then click on this point to get a readout of the impedance of this point. This impedance has got a value of 0.4 as a normalized impedance, but as you know, we can just right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, and then onto the Markers tab, and get it denormalized, click on Apply, and then OK, and we can see that the impedance that we're seeing is 20, 20 ohms. So we verify that our schematic is set up correctly because we see the impedance that we've got in the schematic represented on the chart. Now let's get rid of the marker and uh, we'll have to set up the chart the same way we did before. So we need to have both the impedance and the admittance grids to be able to do a two element match because one of them will be in shunt and one of them will be in series. To do this we'll right click on the chart, go on to properties and then move on to the grid tab and we select both impedance and admittance grids, but we take off uh, the values from the chart, because as we said, uh, the chart can get really busy and it can get a little bit confusing. We'll also select the contour density to be coarse, so as not to have too many lines and make things more visible. The other thing that we need to do to make things more visible and legible is to go onto the Format tab, and then we'll select a color for the impedance lines, which is green, and a color for the admittance lines, which is red. Click on Apply, and then OK. 
Now we have a similar chart to the one that we had uh, before in the previous tutorial. So if I hover over with the mouse on any point on the chart, you can see that we get a readout of the impedance of that point. You can see that in this case, the uh, resistance and reactance are actually denormalized. And that is because, you know, Marcus tab, we decided to have our readout denormalized. So what you see down here in this corner is actually governed by what you've set up on your uh, Marcus tab under the properties menu. For now, we'll keep the readout to be in, uh, an impedance readout because uh, the first element that we will add will be in series, as we'll shortly see. So now, our starting point is here, is purely resistive and is 20 ohms, and our uh, target point is right in the center of the chart, 50 ohms, which is our normalizing impedance. So what I can do is move down a constant resistance circle until I intersect the unity constant conductance circle. Then what I can do is move up this constant conductance circle up to the center of the chart, which is my target impedance. Now, moving uh, down a constant resistance circle, as we've seen in previous tutorials, entails adding a series capacitance. And then, once I've added the right capacitance that will take me to the intersection with the unity conductance circle, then I can add a shunt inductor to be able to move up to the point that I desire. We could do things differently. For example, we could move up the constant resistance circle up to the point where it intersects the unity constant conductance circle. And then, from there, we can move down the unity conductance circle to the point that we desire. If we decide to go this way, to be able to move up the constant resistance circle, we'll have to add a series inductor, and then to be able to move down the constant conductance circle, we'll have to add a shunt capacitor. Here we will be looking at both cases. So you can see that at my starting point, the value of the reactance is pretty much zero. And then at the point where the two circles intersect, the value of the reactance is about minus 24 ohms. So in order to be able to move from my starting point to this intersection point, I need to add an element which has got a reactance of minus 24 ohms. And that's of course a capacitor. So, a uh, reactance of minus 24 ohms corresponds to a value for a capacitor of 6.5 picofarads at the frequency of interest. In this case, we will be adding elements as we go along. So we won't wait until we've done the whole match to put things on the schematic. We will just put them on as uh, we calculate them. And we'll see how this moves us along the chart. So let's go back to our schematic now. And then we can add a capacitor in series with our load and assign the value to it, which we've just calculated, which is 6.5 picofarads. Then we can simulate, go back to our graph, and we can see that we've now moved to the point where the constant resistance circle and the unity constant conductance circle intersect. So we've managed to move things to the point where we want it to be in the interim. Now I need to move up the constant conductance circle, which entails adding a, an inductor in shunt. Now the first thing I need to do, since I'm now working with elements in parallel, is right click on the chart, go on to properties, and then go to the markers tab, and change the readout to admittance. Click on apply, and then OK. So I know that at my target point, the susceptance will be pretty much zero. And then I can hover over with the mouse over the point that I'm interested in, and you can see that the susceptance at this point is about 24 millisiemens. So I can calculate the difference between the susceptance and my target point, which is zero, the susceptance and my starting point, which is 24 millisiemens. And hence, zero minus 24 millisiemens gives me minus 24 millisiemens. And uh, I can then calculate the value of the inductor that corresponds to this susceptance. And it turns out to be 6.5 nanoharries at the frequency of interest. So we can go back to our schematic and then we can insert an inductor in shunt with our series RC and assign a value to it, which is the one we've calculated, 6.5 nanoharries. Now click on simulate and then let's go back to our graph. And you can see that we've achieved our match. We are right bang on in the center of the chart, which is exactly where we want it to be. This means now that uh, in our schematic here, 
the impedance that is seen by the port is exactly 50 ohms. So the uh, load resistor that we had initially of 20 ohms is no longer visible from the port. All the port sees is the impedance that we cr created by inserting a matching network um, which comprises of a capacitor in series and an inductor in shunt. Now let's get rid of this matching network and then carry out the match in a different way this time. So now let's simulate, go back to our graph and we are back to where we started. This time what we're going to do is move up the constant resistance circle and then move down the constant conductance circle. So again we need to change our marker readout to impedance because of course the first element that we are adding is an element in series. So let's do just that, click on apply and then OK. So we're starting from the same point where the reactance is close to zero and we're getting to a point which is along the same constant resistance circle and takes us up to a value of about 24 ohms in terms of reactance. So the reactance on my target point is 24 ohms. The reactance on my starting point is zero. So the uh, difference in reactance is 24 ohms, which is positive, And it is obviously one that corresponds to a, a series inductor being added. We can calculate the value of this inductor, which turns out to be 3.9 nanoharries at the frequency of interest. So as we did before, we can go back to our schematic and then we can add the inductor in series with our load and see what happens on the chart. So we'll assign a value to the inductor, which is the one we've calculated and turns out to be 3.9 nanoharries and then click on simulate. We go back to our graph and we can see that now we've moved to this point, which is right at the intersection between the uh, constant resistance circle and the unity constant conductance circle. So now we need to move down the constant conductance circle to get to the point of interest. Because now we're adding an element in parallel, then we need to right click on the chart, go on to properties and change the readout to admittance. Click on apply and OK. So the susceptance of my target point is of course close to zero. And what is the susceptance of my starting point? Well, if we just hover over with the mouse, we can see that it's about minus 24 millisiemens. So I need to work out the difference between this point, which is zero, and this point, which is minus 24 millisiemens. And this difference, of course, turns out to be 24 millisiemens, which is a positive susceptance and hence corresponds to a shunt capacitor. We can calculate the value of this shunt capacitor directly because the value that we're reading now is denormalized. And this turns out to be uh, roughly 3.9 picofarads at the frequency of interest. So all we've got to do now is go back to our schematic and then we need to add a capacitor in shunt with the uh, series RL that we've already put in and assign a value to it which is the one we've calculated and that's 3.9 picofarads. Now click on simulate and then go back to the graph and you can see that yet again we've achieved the match just as we did before.